Let me start by saying that what was remarkable wasn't just the notion of the concept of Vision 2030, but it was even how he went about it. You know, sitting right across me here is Dr. James Mwangi, who was chairman of the Vision Delivery Board. Um, and I was the, the Director General of Vision Delivery Secretariat. The fact that he thought that he wanted to go outside government, pick men like James Mwangi and myself, that in itself was quite revolutionary at that particular point in time. And the reason he did that was because President Kibaki never did anything merely to do something. Everything he did had a particular purpose, and he was keen to see that the steps and measures taken to undertake a particular effort or initiative would see that effort come into fruition. Now, you talk about 13 years down the road, people say what's happened. Well, Vision 2030 is alive and well. I have said before that a lot of the um, initiatives that you see <coughs> taking place today have their foundations, not just in Vision 2030, but actually in the first five years of President Kibaki's term when he had the economic uh, growth and recovery strategy, mm -hmm. which was a precursor to Vision 2030. That was a typical five-year plan, but focused on growth. In fact, he, 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 he did not want to hear about poverty reduction, which was the original plan. He wanted to change to growth and wealth creation. And when, given, because of the success of what was in short called ERS, mm -hmm. A plan was mooted. Uh, he, he also formed the National Economic and Social Council. Yeah. Again, yes. methodology. Right. He had methodology. He was a systems man. So he created the National Economic and Social Council that brought together private sector, academia, cabinet, uh, international experts, the very top from countries like Korea, Singapore, Malaysia, uh, China, Japan, the UK, sitting qu quarterly for three days with senior government and private sector Kenyan leaders. And from there was mooted Vision 2030. And Vision 2030 was the realization that in order to transform this country, and we require to transform this country in order to make sure that by the year 2030, every Kenyan alive has a prosperous and decent life. That was his dream. It was always his dream that Kenyans, citizens, have a decent life. He realized that you have to transform the country, and you can't transform the country in five years. You need a long the, some of the infrastructure projects, some of the policy initiatives, including governance. You know, the political pillar of yeah. Vision 2030 was about governance, mm -hmm. and the biggest flagship was the constitution. Mm -hmm. The infrastructure project you see today, uh, the roads projects, rail, ports, airports. We have airports in several counties yeah. um, in this country today. Arose from that realization that you needed a holistic vision that covered not just the economic, but also the social, um, and political aspects of our life, and the what we call the enablers, the infrastructure is an enabler, but also public service, um, deliver of public service, performance management in public service. Mm. So he was very holistic in his approach. Yeah. And so today, um, when you hear about the big four, you know, healthcare is another social pillar, affordable housing is another social pillar, um, uh, agri food security, mm. agriculture, and economic pillar, which is a fast sector in the economic pillar is geared towards food security. Uh, manufacturing, you know, um, that is where jobs will be created, again, in the economic pillar of Vision 2030. So it is alive and well okay. 13 years later. 